Have you ever stumbled across a tool that you had no idea that you wanted it or even that you needed it, but once you saw what it does, all of a sudden you can't live without it? And that's what I'm going to show you today. But anyway, the tool that I want to talk about is the Swag Off-Road Finger Brake that goes in this press and it allows you to make all kinds of your own bins in aluminum, steel, whatever. Make your own brackets, shelves, anything you want. And in my case, it's for my off-road Jeep. I've already had to buy three or four brackets that I would have rather been able to make myself. So I finally pulled the trigger and bought me a finger brake. So I got this in the mail about a week back and I just haven't had time to mess with it really. So we're gonna get started putting this bad boy together here in a minute. So this is the first step. Press those dowel rods in, square them up, tack weld them, make sure they're still square, and then once they are to plug weld them in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my press to build my press. So it calls for pushing this halfway through this plate, which is three-eighths of plate. Let's see what happens here. So it started, but it ain't in there yet. Probably would work better if I chamfered this edge, honestly. Yeah, that's pretty close. The speed square and even the angle finder to try to see how square the uh, dowel rods stayed in there. All right, so I've got those pushed in far enough. So now what I'm trying to do is square these up before I tack weld them. And they are in there really freaking tight. So I've got this one squared up on this plane. Um, but now I need this to go that way by about three to three and a half degrees. One more good whack. I'm within a half a degree. I don't think it's that big of a freaking deal. All right, so now I'm gonna throw a couple tack welds on it. So now we gotta check and see if they stayed straight. 1090. We're gonna fully plug weld these, grind the bottom smooth, and. Woo! Oh, I got my foot! Alright, so it basically says to tack weld these in place there and there. Step, but I'm gonna go ahead and weld these in here before I go to bed for the night because I don't feel like tackling the big projects. The next day. When you set this in there and like get it centered and whatnot, like if it's not sitting all the way flush down in there, it tells you to like grind away a little bit of this. So now there's no more rock back and forth, no more play, no more wiggle. So now it's just a matter of getting it centered up with these dowels. So the next thing I need to do is get these guide tubes, I guess, welded onto this upper die plate. You have to make sure that it, it lines up with this, and then that way the whole thing lines up with your channel here, which I have not welded in yet. There's several ways you can skin this cat. Instructions call for taking a couple of your fingers, putting them in either side, getting it lined up centered. You also need to make sure that this is square this way. Well, after you get that how you want it, you have to make sure you don't get any weld on this back plate, which has the threads in it. 
but it wants both sides of this completely welded. Well, you get right here, and there's a special note in there to make sure you don't get any spatter or anything on this surface because then it's not going to want to clamp your fingers down very well. There's there's a little bit of a gap there. That way when you do weld down here that it's not your weld isn't running into this to where you have to grind it away because I think they end up about like I said right right about there or whatever. So I figured if they made note of it in the instructions I'll make note of it here. From what I can see, I don't really like how these fingers are sitting down in that angle iron, though they seem to be favoring this back edge. It's not binding, that's good. Okay, so there's something that I'm not super happy about with these dies. They're not freaking centered. This is like shaded to this side. It's like way down here on this side, but up there, I mean, you see how much higher that is? Like, these are not centered at all. And that's creating a little bit of a problem because when I was, when I was lining these up with them, I was lining them up with this point. But what that ended up doing was kind of making these be off center with the whole assembly. For them to sit all the way down in here, I'm having to shade this thing way to the back. Somehow I got a feeling it's going to be even worse this way. Because I don't want this thing to be so far shaded to one side that all of a sudden this one's at 49 degrees and this one's at 41 or whatever. Let me see if I can show you. So you see like how far I have this overlapped over here. And then how it's like barely hitting it there. And on this side it actually seems to be sitting down in there pretty good. Over here, not so much. You can see that's like really shaded to this side back here. So I'm not really sure what I'm wanting to do about this. So while I was trying to decide what I was going to do with that, I went ahead and emailed Swag Off-Road. And they called me back and told me that it's, it's normal for them to have a little bit of variance during the milling process. Although he did say mine was unusually much, but he assured me that it's still going to work just fine due to the way that this presses. Rather than do this in the order the instructions tell you, basically what they want me to do is get this centered, make sure it's on 45s, get it tacked in. And then they want me to put all the fingers in here and make sure they're all pointing the same way since they're off. He wants me to set it in here, get them to where they're sitting down in the crack, and then find a way to hold it up and then slide these outer guides over the rods and tack it on there that way. So that's what I'm gonna try. Okay, hopefully this shows up all right. So I showed you before how like these slants are farther down on one side and if you put these two together, they're flush. But if you flip one to the opposite direction, they end up like that. two little slots right here one on either side it kind of sits perfectly in between them so I'm gonna go ahead and tack it down like that all right so it stayed uh, pretty within reason so I am going to clamp all the dies down and get it all set in there and see what I can do with it a few minutes later Okay, so this is pretty much what I did. I cut this one off and I started repositioning this and I discovered this one's actually all right. So I was able to get this sitting down in there how I want it to. And then I set the whole thing on this piece of plate and I leveled up my angle finder to it because this table's not really level. So the challenge of doing it this way is not only do you have to hold this up here flush with the top of this, you have to keep things in check on this front and back plane at the top and at the bottom they have to hold three different planes still at the same time all while tacking it and all while not moving 
I got it tacked back in there. It's sitting down there how I want it now. It's sitting pretty damn close to level. The rods don't appear to be binding, so I'm gonna call it a win. So now I have to unbolt the fingers out of there and weld these guys on there. All right, so now I gotta weld these up all the way through up to there on both sides. You wanna try to keep any of your spatter from getting on this surface because that's where it clamps the fingers. I'm just gonna throw some of my nozzle gel on there. It's pretty good about keeping the nozzle clean on my welding gun, so I'm sure it should work here too. And then you also have to be careful with how far your weld spills out on, on, onto here. This clamping bar, it, it stops a little short of the edge, but if your weld ends up fat, the directions basically say to just bevel this edge so that it clears. that's how that turned out there's actually enough void there that i'm thinking about running another pass on there just because this thing does get under a pretty tremendous amount of pressure from the press okay so i can set this plate on there and it's it's hitting this weld on this side the edge of this is running into it so what i'm gonna do is just bevel this edge right here so that it clears Okay, so I beveled out these edges. I clear the welds and I ran the bolts in. It sits down flush now. I think I gotta put the springs on there, put all the fingers in there, throw it down, and then bring the whole thing over, set it in the press, take this collar, line it up with my ram, get it on the top of here, tack it down and weld it, and then I think I'm done. You know, I almost forgot something. The back stop. So this bolts into those two studs you saw on the back with the wing nuts. And that way you can adjust it if you wanna make repeatable bends on stuff. I really don't see myself using this, but if I ever need it, I got it. I wanna talk about the bend radius a little bit. So this is the heavy duty finger brake. So it has the big V instead of the small V. The wider that V is, the longer of a curve your bend is gonna have, so it's not gonna be like a sharp bend, like a piece of angle iron. Now the way around that is, you take all the different sizes of angle iron you can find, down to probably about that small, and you just stack them together, cut them to length, which I think it's 19 inches, and you drop them down in there, so then you can get a much shorter bend radius. For now, my test bend is just gonna be with the factory lower die, and I'm gonna be bending some fairly thick quarter inch flat stock that I got. So you wanna also uh, center up your work on these. You don't wanna be pressing way out here. I'll do the end with the sticker. If you want like a perfect 90, then throw your angle finder on there and stop when it's at 45. It'll probably be just short of 90 at that point. So you might have to go a couple degrees past 45. I gotta say, not too bad. I don't know if I quite maxed this thing out, but I knew I was past 90 degrees, so I just decided to stop. For being quarter inch, I don't know how well using those smaller bend radius would work, to be honest. So this it really isn't that bad, especially if you're just making some random bracket to hold something up on your Jeep or whatever it is. Overall, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna make a bunch of stuff with it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And also, if you wanna save 10% at the Yes Welder store, Use my code flawed off road. You'll save a fat little chunk of money. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.